Chad is here. Hey, Chad is here. Uh, just uh, double checking on Luke Shuey, everything is all good on that regard. He's due to return. Yeah, look, he was pretty close on Saturday at Captain's Run. He ticked all the boxes then, so he trained fully today, so he'll, he'll, he'll play this week. Any other team announcements that you can give us with the team you have shortly? Um, oh, Archie won't play. He's got a, he got a sore back from a heavy heavy knock last week, so he'll, he'll miss this week's game. But um, that's probably the only change at this stage, but we'll, we'll wait and see. Adam, who's in the mix to come in for Archie? Oh well, it's, at the moment Luke is the um, is the obvious choice, and we just reshuffle our team. So, yeah, we'll name a squad. We're, we're not fully decided on on the final final team, but um, Luke's definitely in, and, and Arch is definitely out. So, there may be one or two changes around that, but at this stage, that's that's given you more than I normally give you. <laughs> Last week, that uh, because of uh, the way teams set up to try and counter McGovern, um, and, you, and you mentioned a couple of things in the post match that Fremantle had done to try and negate his influence, Collingwood has a very similar player with, with Darcy Moore and, and, a, and a player who has the potential to greatly influence games. How do you set about countering him? Well, that's a good question. Uh, we traditionally haven't done, um, haven't used those tactics um, against rebounding or intercept defenders. Harris Andrews is another one who's, who's right up there in the competition and I dare say they'll cop the same attention that McGovern cops most weeks um, sooner rather than later. So we're working through that. Um, it's gift to get to though, you know, you sacrifice a bit of structure and system to, to try and take out a defender. But um, a lot of teams have done it against us in the past. It's probably a 50-50 normally most weeks that um, Someone has a bit of a role on McGovern, so um, Collingwood have traditionally done some things down down their forward line with our backmen, so um, we're anticipating that might happen for us, and whether we do it or not, we'll, we'll work through that. Adam, I think everyone sort of is watching from afar, wondering, you know, are the Eagles back after three wins against sides they probably would have been expecting to, to beat? Is that the internally the feel as well, that this, this week is a, is a test for yourselves to see where you're measuring up to uh, as well? I think so, yeah. It's, that's a fair assumption. I mean, um, no disrespect to the teams we played in the last three weeks. Um, we had to play a lot better than we did after the Port Adelaide game. I, I thought we've gradually improved and we're building towards hopefully a sustainable brand that stands up against anyone. So, yeah, I think the way we've gone about it the last three weeks has been pleasing for me. Sometimes you win games um, just based on talent or experience, but I think our system's evolved with the season and it will get tested fully this week. You know, Collingwood have been playing a pretty strong brand from the very beginning of the year and it hasn't really changed for two or three years. So um, we like to think we're not too far away, but we'll find out this week definitely with the way Collingwood play and how physical and contested the game will be. And, how well they are at defending. So there's, there's challenges in front of us, but the, the boys are ready. What's the part that you're waiting to click then, if you feel like you're not too far away? What's the, what's the piece of your puzzle that uh, you feel isn't quite there? Uh, I don't know if it's a piece of the puzzle. It's just continue to elevate your own brand, I suppose, and what your identity is as a club. So, you know, I think it's been pretty consistent for, for three weeks, but the opposition probably goes up a level without, once again, disrespecting Freeman, I thought they played a really good system as well and perhaps our experience got us over the line last week so yeah we're, we're playing a, a hardened experienced um, talented side so that's probably the next step is to, to, to do it against a side who's possibly competing, competing for a premiership Adam, Does Nick Natanui gear himself up to play Brody Grundy? Um, I think he builds himself up Every week, he's quite often, um, oh, he's the hunted, but uh, I think Nick's at his best when he hunts. So uh, I think he thrives on playing on the good ruckman. Um, but the way the competition is at these days is every week there's a good ruckman to play against and there's probably none better than what we're confronting this week. So Grundy's an exceptional player. Um, I don't know if they've played against each other too. I don't know they played late last year and, um, and obviously Nick's been out with his knee. So. I'm not sure of the record, but I'm assuming it's been pretty close. 
Adam's looking for us. Sam, Lance, Baker here in Melbourne. Sorry, you go. Apologies. Adam was just going to ask that the boys really counting down the days now until they're out of quarantine and yourself as well. A little bit, yeah. Um, we, we appreciate the fact we've been able to quarantine at home. That's been great. So no complaints from us. But uh, it will be good to get outside of the club and outside of your house. But um, no, no complaints from our end. We're, um, we've got it good compared to some others. So we're, um, yeah, we're dealing with whatever's in front of us, just like every other team at the moment. And yeah, I think Sunday, Saturday night we're out of it. So Sunday morning the boys can go for a walk before the game. Does it surprise you that some are struggling? And yeah, you have any you fallen base to keep players engaged towards the end of your stay? Yeah, I, I, I can't hear you. <laughs> but I'll, I'll guess that the question's about guys who, who pre perhaps may be struggling uh, mentally in, in the hub situations. I, I suppose our experience is it's regardless of um, the environment, we're going to have players who have ups and downs. And there's personal lives that affect performance sometimes and issues that they have off field uh, are there all the time. So. Having the resources to deal with those issues is important from a football club point of view, and we've got you know, up to 50 players on our list, and quite often um, we've got to deal with these situations where they're private and personal, and we put the resources in place to support. And sometimes you get to step away from the game, and that's when it becomes a little bit more public. Um, what is pleasing is you guys, the media, respect that, and when you hear of someone who may be struggling, there's a professional distance you put there, which we all appreciate. Um, and some guys are a bit more public than others. I think a lot of situations take place where it's we keep it in-house and we deal with things with the staff point of view as well um, and you look at the hub situation it's probably just exacerbates it a little bit more um, when you're away from home and sometimes those resources aren't there for you for um, for support you know just back to that ruck battle how different is it when Nick Natanui goes up against you know one of the best ruckmen in the competition um, in contrast to when he's up against maybe a second string ruckman, how, how differently do you go about things? Um, well, it's a pretty obvious answer, I suppose. You, the mids really need to adapt, I suppose. If you think you're going to have an advantage in the ruck, they'll get more aggressive. And if, if you think it's more of a break-even battle, then um, they'll be a little bit more conservative. I, I suppose what Grundy does, it's not just in the ruck, it's what he does around the ground and how he goes about it. So he's more um, a, a complete you know, it's fifth mid, I suppose, whereas um, Nick has power and attributes that I don't think anyone can match in terms of follow-up and contest. So um, two different types of ruckman um, with potentially game-winning abilities. So that will be one for everyone to watch. Adam, they have a different type of forward line um, to a lot of other teams, particularly teams in contention. What sort of different challenges do they present to you at that end of the ground? Well, if you look at their side from last week, they, they Cox didn't play. Um, I know Dugowie kicked kicked five goals, so um, you know, disappointing he's not playing for, for Collingwood. Um, not so disappointing for us, I bet he's a, he's a very good player. We all like to see him play. But uh, yeah, the, the dynamics of their front half are a little bit different. Um, they quite often they have a small forward who's isolated deep uh, in the past. and. Obviously, Stevenson's done that, and Elliot's capable of doing that. Um, very versatile. They're hardworking, and they defend really well. So that's an issue that we're going to deal with. The biggest issue with Collingwood is their ability to, to lock the ball in their front half and defend really well behind that, and that's why teams have struggled to score. So the midfield battle is going to be really important. Whoever can get that supply and, and dominance will, will go a long way towards winning the game, I think. Just on the midfield battle, Tim Kelly seems to have stepped up the last couple of weeks. What's your opinion on the last couple of weeks with him and also Luke Shuey coming back into the side, how those two gel together again? Yeah, he's getting better flow, I suppose, is how you describe it with our, the rest of our mids. He's, um, you know, it takes a little bit of time to connect with, with new players, new system, um, different grounds really as well. So we're trying to work through that um, as best we can. I think he's getting better every week. Um, his connection with our rucks and with, with Nick's there um, and what he does around the ball when it leaves the, leaves the stoppage seems to be improving. So I think there's another level with, um, with all of our mids, but Tim's building week to week, so he's probably, he's probably getting better every week, which is really pleasing. Simo, Anna from Seven News here. Just a quick one. Um, we understand that Liam Ryan might 
be a relative of that eight-year-old boy that died yesterday in Mantra. Just wondering if you've got any update on that and whether I believe he wasn't at training today. Yeah, there is a connection there, and obviously that's a private matter that um, you know we have the utmost respect for. So he's dealing with that at the moment. Um, the tragic news for everyone, um, but to be connected to it, you know, um, our heart goes out to Liam and his family. So obviously that's a private issue, and he'll deal with that the best way he can. And we're here to support. Adam, do you expect uh, Liam Ryan to, to play on Sunday after that yesterday? I don't know. Yeah, that'll be his call. So. Um, We'll see how he feels in the next couple of days and how he is mentally and, and physically. So we'll we'll back him out of the way. Whatever he needs to do, he'll he'll do. And Lewis Jenner at the moment, uh, where's he at? Is any well, closer to returning? Uh -huh. Yeah, he's he's put together really good um, two or three weeks of form. Albeit we haven't been able to play um, any reserves games. We've we've been in quarantine this week and we didn't play the week before. So found himself out of the side. He's worked on um, some of the things that, you know, we need him to get better at. So he's he's ticked all those boxes. Now it's about opportunity. I think Cole and Nelson and Duggan have really elevated their uh, presence on field as well. So he's now got to fight for a spot. So he's, he's available. Um, he'll play this week in the scrimmage game. Um, he's in good spirits, in good health. So now it's about getting some good form. So I, w I think we play Collingwood after we play our senior game. So he'll, he'll no doubt have a go there. Drew over in Melbourne. I was just hoping to. Sorry, Justin. Um, just no, hoping to get your thoughts, Simo, on um, on the rivalry that you've developed with Collingwood over the last few years, and um, I guess who's holding the edge at the moment? <laughs> it's on the edge. Well, they are. Um, they beat us last year, round 17, I think. It was a pretty close game. They blew us away in the last quarter. Um, I think we blew them away in the last quarter, round three last year, and then before that was the grand final. So. Um, they've all been pretty close games up until a point. Uh, yeah, two pretty big, powerful clubs with great supporter base. Hopefully we get all of our supporters we can get uh, to the ground on the weekend. I think it's 30,000 this week, so we need to bring some noise. We need some more free kicks. We're, 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 <laughs> we're dropping away. I think the Pies are up there number one for free kicks for, and we might be slipping down, so we might need the crowd back to, to boost the numbers. Um, but no, good rivalry, good healthy respect uh, for both clubs, uh, I'm assuming, and at, um, normally pretty good footies played. I'll just add to that then, Simo, the noise of affirmation that you hinted at. Bring it back. That might help you guys this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, um, oh, for whatever reason, sometimes, you know, you, you get more free kicks when you're first to the ball. And I, I think, to be honest, that's what Collins has been doing this year. And that's what we've been working on. So. Uh, hopefully, and we don't, I don't really look at the free kicks to be honest, but um, someone did tell me we were a bit lower than we used to be. So maybe it is the crowd.